Mr. Krautsman. All right, you've seen that recording in progress. We've got a slide about that. Um, I just want to welcome everyone. Hello, welcome to Scholarly Snippets. Um, this version of Scholarly Snippets is about Zotero, which is a reference manager that might just change your life. And yes, it's probably selling it a little high, but I use it all the time and it's made my life so much better. Uh, my name is Molly Montgomery. I am a medical librarian and the director of the uh, library at the Idaho College of Osteopathic Medicine, and I will be your tour guide for the next 30 minutes talking about Zotero. So as you heard, this webinar is being recorded. So by continuing to be in the webinar, you're consenting to being recorded. If you are not comfortable with that, feel free to go ahead and log off with the knowledge that all of the Scholarly Snippets uh, webinars are recorded and they're at the Scholarly Snippets uh, YouTube channel, which the link is right there, but we'll send that out later as well. So if you are new to the Scholarly Snippets webinar series, we've been doing these for, oh, I don't know, about a year now, maybe a year and a half. Oops, sorry, I'm looking backwards. Um, they are a series of webinars that are designed to help you advance your research skills and support your scholarly activities. All of these are organized and taught by uh, librarians at osteopathic medical schools all over the United States. And the audience is basically anyone who has any interest in any of these topics. Uh, that includes students, faculty, clinicians, librarians, either at osteopathic schools or really anywhere. We have no preference. If you're interested, we would like you to attend. So today's objectives, uh, we're gonna describe reference managers in general. Then we're gonna really dig into how to use Zotero, uh, focusing on the primary features and the primary tools related to uh, Zotero. And we'll talk a little bit about ways to integrate Zotero into your research or even just your regular work workflow. So I gave a webinar, I think another scholarly snippets webinar back in November, I think about reference manager, managers in general. So if you really want to dig into that, go to the YouTube channel and find that. But here's the one slide overview. The reference managers are, are also known as citation managers because they manage a lot of different kinds of citations. They're designed to save and store and organize all kinds of references, not just articles, which a lot of people think that's all they're for. But I have things like uh, YouTube videos and PowerPoints and websites, all kinds of stuff can be in a reference manager. They also allow for cloud-based sharing. So all of your resources should be in the cloud and you should be able to access them any place you can use a reference manager. And they allow for collaboration if you're working in teams. And one of the best things, especially for students, they love them because a reference manager can help you easily create citations and reference lists. Truly magical. Um, and they are reference managers, I think, really are a wonderful tool that will change your life. I always ask students who are engaging in any kind of a research project um, what reference manager they're using as before I even ask about their topic, before I ask about what they have done so far, I ask them what reference manager they're using. That usually um, kind of causes them to stop up short, but if you don't start at the beginning, this can be really frustrating. So that's reference managers in general. Now, here's a number of um, screenshots of the logos of a lot of different reference managers. Some of these you may have used, some of these you may be familiar with, others maybe not so much. So the Scholarly Snippets series has already covered um, how to use a few of these. So we have a webinar on SciWheel. We have a webinar on RefWorks. There's a webinar that is going to be done on EndNote in April. And of course, I'm gonna be talking about Zotero. So I've been using Zotero for, I mean, I think almost as long as Zotero has existed for almost 20 years. And I love it. I won't, I just love it so much. Um, but I know it's not all rainbows and butterflies. So there's some things that could be improved upon as well. So first of all, the good stuff about Zotero, it is free-ish. It's one of those kinds of software where depending on how much you use it, at some point there is a cost associated with it. And Zotero is base, bases that on um, the storage capacity. So if you're putting a bunch of files and a bunch of PDFs in Zotero, eventually it's going to say you have too much, you, we need to start charging you. And I think that's, uh, I looked that up today and it's 300 megabytes, which in these days that doesn't sound like much. Um, 
but I used it for a good amount of time before I hit that. Now I'm on their yearly plan where I think I get access to three gigs of data for 20 bucks a year. I think that's a steal. I think it's a really great um, uh, deal, honestly, because I use Zotero a lot and I still have not reached my max on that. Another thing I like about Zotero is that it may seem complicated at first, but once you start to learn the basics, there's not that much to it. And there can be a bit of a learning curve, but once you know those basic things to look for, it's really easy. And I also like it because you can use it with teams. So if you're doing research across within your institution, across institutions, you can have a shared um, folder basically for all of your files. Okay, so the not as good. The, uh, one of the issues is that it doesn't work very well on mobile devices. One of the things that Zotero and many reference managers rely on is um, kind of a, a connector between your browser and the software. And this doesn't work really well on mobile devices. So it's basically a desktop based or a laptop based uh, software. Um, it also doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. There's some reference managers out there that are really slick and look kind of fancy and allow you to do a lot of things. And Zotero just isn't that one. <laughs> it, it's nice, but it's definitely not fancy. And again, I've been using Zotero for about 15 years and it looks almost exactly the same as it did back then. They, did, they have sort of cleaned things up, but Zotero is really not about adding features and making it look super pretty. It's functional and that's why I like it. Okay, so before I get into how to use, how, uh, how it looks and how to use it in particular, I will talk about some of the use cases that I use Zotero for. So I'm a librarian, I'm not engaging a lot of original research. So I'm not like preparing grants or applying for IRB approval or things like that but I use Zotero still at least several times a week. And here's some of the reasons I do so. I use it in work projects a lot. So if I'm preparing a lecture or a presentation, a conference uh, presentation, a poster, anything along those lines, I create folders, which you see on the right-hand side here. And I include all of those references and citations I wanna keep track of in those folders for all of this sort of stuff. Um, as a librarian, I do a lot of searches, so sometimes I want to organize all of those searches, especially if, for whatever reason, a particular database like PubMed, which has some good features for this, isn't working well for me for that particular search. I just create a folder and I add all that stuff there. Um, I decided I had too much free time in my life, so I'm um, back in school. I'm getting a master's in public health, and I use Zotero uh, weekly, several times a week for all kinds of assignments. I actually do some actual research, so I'll create folders for those. And sometimes I just use it for advanced bookmarking. Like I don't want to bookmark it in Chrome or Firefox. I want to create a nice folder and I want to have all of my resources in there, especially if I'm bookmarking different types of things. I will just create a Zotero folder for that. Oops. There we go. Okay, so if you're interested in Zotero, it's very easy to get. You just go to zotero.org and you'll click on the download button that's on the main screen. And once you do that, Zotero will recognize what kind of machine you're on. So I did took this screenshot and I'm on a Mac and it also knows what browser you were on. So I use Chrome and getting Zotero is a two-step process. You need this Zotero 5.0, which is the main Zotero software, but you also need that connector because the way that uh, you import items into Zotero is usually you're importing as you're searching online, whether it's PubMed or Google Scholar or some other database or resource. Google Chrome needs to be able to talk to Zotero and vice versa, so you'll have to do both of those. Um, it's also really helpful to create an account. It's not essential for most things, but it's great because those will sync all of the things that are in your library. It allows you to create group accounts, and um, then you can download Zotero on different devices, such as Macs or, or such as your laptop, or like I have it on my desktop here, but I also have it on my laptop so I can use it at home as well. Okay, I'm going to get into a live Zotero demonstration, but before I do, I'm going to just look at, show you uh, the layout of Zotero. This is what it looks like. It's basically um, three different windows that have different types of information. 
So in the first one, you're looking at what Zotero calls its collections. These are basically folders that you create. So you can have folders and subfolders and sub subfolders. You can just really get out of control with that. In the next window over the central window, this is where the items that are in each folder are contained. So like in this case, it looks like I had selected rural health. So within my rural health folder, I have all of these resources. The icons look a little different because they're for different types. So the blue icons for websites, the white is for journal articles. And we're gonna get more into detail about how to um, customize this and what this all means in a second. Then the last item is the individual information for each item. So I have selected this health related behaviors. And so if I come over here, this gives me what kind of item it is. It gives me the title, all of the authors and abstract where it came from. Lots and lots of information. Okay, so I'm going to get out of this and I'm going to open my Zotero and we're gonna try this live. <laughs> I will warn you that it is so Tarot has a ton of pop-up windows. So there may be something I'm talking about that doesn't show up on the screen. If so, I will just walk through it and I'll describe it or just let me know. So I'm gonna add Zotero. And I'll have, um, or should we just do Zotero? Okay, so you should see the live view of my Zotero window now. You should see the folder and the central area. Um, any thumbs up on that? Looks good. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about what's in each of these windows. Um, so first of all, Zotero is a software. So it, for me, it's just an application on my Mac. I have it saved in the little, um, that little desktop pop-up. So anytime I want to use it, I just click on that and pop it open. Um, so this is a list of all of my folders. Again, I've been using Zotero for 15 years, so it's out of control. I could definitely, as a librarian, I feel bad because it probably needs to be more organized. Um, I'm going to scroll down here to uh, my MPH program, just as an example of how you could potentially organize things. So I have the different classes I've taken, and then within each class, I have different assignments and the references I have saved for those particular assignments. Um, I think I'll get into this one. Okay, we'll just look at that one. And so in the middle section, again, this is where the individual items for each folder are. And this is just the way I organize it. The nice thing about Zotero is really customizable. So I've organized this by title and it looks like it is organized by publication date. If I want to organize it by maybe alphabetically uh, listing the titles in order, I can do that just by clicking on title. I also have the creator, which is usually the author or whoever was responsible for that. In this case, I've got a website that's done by the Census Bureau. You can also organize it by item type, by year, or by date added. I do use date added a lot because sometimes I don't remember when I, like I don't remember the name of the article or website, but I, I was like, I know I added that in the last two weeks. And so I'll organize it by date added so I can look. Um, you can also see, I don't know if this is gonna pop up, but there's this tiny, tiny little square over here in the right-hand corner. And this is will give you options for um, adding different things to organize. So you can either unclick things like, if I don't wanna organize by the date I added it, but I do wanna add a publisher, you can do that. Very customizable. Um, um, there are, oh, go ahead. This would be a good time. Somebody asked a question in the chat of if you can include the same source in multiple folders. And oh, yeah. So does that PDF count the number of times it was listed or the PDF's house in a centralized location? No, you can add items in the same source. So I think. So I've got this health disparities folder which was on this paper and there's all of my sources there. And some of these sources are also specifically in one of these folders. And if you were to go up to my main library, everything in all of these folders is there. Um, so one of the issues that librarians are gonna be interested in is its ability to dedupe, especially if you're doing systematic reviews. And so Tara, that is definitely not its strength. Like if you want to use this for systematic reviews and try to make sure you don't have a bunch of duplicates, EndNote is a much better tool for that. I will tell you that. But um, yes, yeah, so you can definitely have different items in different folders. It can get out of control, but if you really have an item that goes well in multiple 
spaces, it's fine. Like I, I do that as well. I make sure that. And I don't know that the PDF counts the number of times it's listed in a, or if it's housed in a central location. Like if you are looking for, if that's, if you're looking up against um, like the storage capacity, it's not gonna count against that. Cause I don't think it's, it's not including multiple copies, but that is a good question. I'll have to think about that a little. Oh boy, that's a much bigger question. How would you dedupe, dedupe if you don't have EndNote? There are some databases out there, some reference managers that are better than EndNote. Um, we have used, <laughs> this is a bigger project Katie is, in, is on as well. We've used SciWheel, we've used um, their system, their specifically systematic review databases, but yes, feel free to send me an email afterwards, kind of outside the scope of this particular one. But yes, that's that's a bigger question and, and there are better resources for that. But I'm not, I don't do a lot of systematic reviews. So deduping is not something that I do a lot. Um, good questions. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, oh yeah, the next thing I was going to show you is that some of these have little arrows next to them. They're just drop downs. And so I'm gonna to try to bring up one that's got a PDF and none of them do there. Okay. So when you are importing items into Zotero, like when you're doing a search, and I'm gonna show you how this works in a minute. So when you're doing a search on say Google Scholar or PubMed and you import it into Zotero, if Zotero sees a PDF, it will pull that PDF in with it. And so in this case, that PDF is there. Um, sometimes they also have a PubMed, like they'll have a link like this. So if I wanted to go directly back to this, I could click on this PubMed entry and it'll take me to this particular citation in PubMed. Um, let me come up over here. Actually, I'm going to use this one. So now I'm going to look at some of the item details. This is really nice. Zotero is very good. Zotero does its best, but sometimes it doesn't import things correctly. So it's important to know that I didn't type any of this information in. This is all coming directly from whatever source I brought this in, usually um, PubMed or Google Scholar. And so that's great. That saves a lot of typing, but sometimes the metadata or the journal data or something is not everything is there. So sometimes you have to come in and actually add the information manually. Generally, not a huge issue. Um, there, I'm going to click on this this uh, journal article, and it's going to bring up a big box that has a list. And whether that shows up, I don't know. Um, but these are all the different types of um, items that can be imported into uh, Zotero. Anything from artwork to audio recordings to presentations to podcasts. It's just a lot of stuff. And so, if you end up changing that, that's going to change some of these fields to make it more specific to that item type. Uh, here are a bunch of authors. If you need to add authors, there's a little plus sign over there. If you need to remove authors, you can um, do that as well. You can edit them just by clicking on it. And sometimes you, this is not actually an author, maybe it's an editor or someone else. So you can change that as well. Um, okay, uh, another thing that to look at is that you can actually add notes to different citations. So. I use this sometimes when I am creating maybe a presentation or I'm getting ready to write a paper and I'm like, okay, this particular, I'm going to maybe um, it is really good as the introduction or here's a quote I really like. I'm going to copy and paste it and put it in notes so I can go back and find it later when I'm ready to compile everything together. Um, there's also tags. Let me see if I can find one that actually, okay, so this is tags. Sometimes when you import things from a database, it will import subject headings. So these, I didn't put these in, but you can also add your own tags, which is nice because you can, there's a search field right here where you can actually search for items based on tags. So if you have a particular tag that's maybe like, <laughs> for people writing dissertations there. I, I use this as an example. So maybe this is like, okay, this is your introduction section. So if you want to cite this in your introduction, use that as a tag, search for on it and all of those will come up. Just a different way. I don't use it a lot, but it's nice to know that it's there. Uh, the final thing I'm going to talk about before we talk about how to import stuff is to show you this um, kind of a, a life hack, a Zotero hack. A lot of times when items are imported into Zotero, it will import them looking like this, which is the title is in 
um, title case, not sentence case. And if you use a citation style that requires it to be in sentence case, say APA, if you were to create a reference out of this, it would be in the wrong style. And so you can right click, and I'm not sure this will pop up, but I'm going to right click, and there's something that says title case or sentence case. I can switch it to sentence case, and now it's in sentence case. All you need to double check is to make sure that there's any, there's proper nouns. You need to go back and make sure that you um, alphabetize or capitalize those. Just that's my little life hack if you use APA a lot, which unfortunately is what my program uses. So I do that a lot. Okay, so that is using, that's kind of like navigating the Zotero window. So let's talk about how do you actually get stuff into Zotero. Now I'm going to go back and I'm gonna start sharing Chrome again, and hopefully I can have both of these open. Okay, so I'm back in Chrome. So I'm gonna go over to Google Scholar and I'm at the point where I have to start thinking about a thesis topic for my master's program. And I'm really interested in how public libraries use health information. So I'm gonna search on that. And you're going to see, my little screen here is way up at the upper right hand corner. There are some various bookmarklets that I have downloaded and um, uh, extensions. And I've got a Mendeley one, I've got some other stuff in Zoom. But the one I'm looking for is Zotero. I'm not sure if you can see it pop up. There's this little tiny yellow, what looks like a yellow manila folder. Zotero, once you download it and get that uh, browser extension installed, it's always going to just be there. It's always live. It's always waiting to find information that it can cite. And so in this case, that means it can cite a lot of different things is what a folder will look like. I'm gonna click on this. And now that little icon has changed. The cha this is indicative of a journal article. So I can click on this right now and it will save it to Zotero. But something I do caution, especially if you start to get a library that looks like mine, which is a little overwhelming, is to come back over to Zotero and make sure that you are in the folder that you need because that's where it's going to download to. In this case, I am going to um, the folder that's listed as my MPH program. I'm going to add a new sub collection. I'm going to title it thesis and click OK. Now, there's nothing in this yet, but I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to come back over to my Google Chrome window. And now I'm going to click on this and we'll see. So it tells me it's saving to the thesis folder. It gives me the information. It looks like it found a PDF. So it's brought that PDF in. Now I'm going to come back over to Zotero and we're going to look at it. So it's great. That's the one thing that's in this folder is the health information programming article. Uh, we've got all the information and there's the citation stuff. I didn't type anything. I hit a button. It was magical and wonderful. And this is what I love. So you can do this with anything. So Tara was always looking for stuff to pull in. So just look at that little icon in the upper right hand corner if you're looking to cite things. And this can be, like I said, websites, it can be podcasts, it can be NPR radio stories, it can be PowerPoints, YouTube videos, anything. It's always there waiting to find things to cite. Um, okay. I'm, I'm not going to talk too much more about how to import stuff because truly is that easy. And I know I'm running out of time. There is another way to import stuff. If you have a bunch of PDFs and you are wanting to move them into Zotero, you literally can just drag the PDF from a file to, a, um, to the, this Zotero area. So nice. You also, if you really want to, can do it manually, but try not to do that. Almost always you can search for something online and import it easily. Okay, next thing I'm gonna talk about, I know I'm going quick, quick, quick. Is there any questions? Let me look in the chat. Oh, someone said it was very cool. Everything about Zotero is very cool. Um, all right, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to talk about how do you create references? Because a lot of the power of Zotero is actually in creating reference lists and citations as well. There's a couple of ways. One of the ways is to go straight through the Zotero window and just select what you want. And this is usually what I do if I want to email references or I want to add a reference list to a PowerPoint slide. I just go in and I do like a shift select and then I right click. And again, I'm not sure this, the window is going to show up when I right click, but if it doesn't, there's a lot of options that start from view PDF to find available PDFs. But what I'm looking for is one that call it, is um, create bibliography from items. And 
I'm going to do that and I actually will add this to the share. Share that. There, you go. there it is. Okay. So when you do this, it's going to pop up with this box that says citation style, and then you can choose one of the citation styles you need. So Tarot has about the top maybe 15 to 20 citation styles listed here. But if you want more, there's this little link that says manage styles, and that will take you to an external Zotero page, which has over 10,000 citation styles. I checked yesterday, it's like 10,500. It's bonkers. Um, for the output mode, if you want a reference list, it's going to be bibliography. And I always just do copy to clipboard because that's basically like doing a control C. So I'm going to click OK. So it's copied. I'm going to come back over here to my Chrome window. And I'm just going to create a new Google Doc. And now I'm just going to control V or paste. And there's your reference list. This is usually like early on when I used to teach this class, this is where people would be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So it truly is. It's so great. All right. So that's one way to get references in. Another way is to use Zotero's cite as you write feature. And this is available in Google Docs and in Word. And once you have downloaded the extension, you, it should already show up in Google Docs. So I have this little um, drop down that says Zotero. So if I want to use that, so I can do Zotero is great. And now I need a citation. So I'm going to click on Zotero and I'm going to add or edit a citation. The first time I do this, or anytime you do this, and you're probably not seeing this box pop up, but it will ask you your citation style you want to use. So that's nice. And so it, it's asking me which one I want. I selected APA. And then it also pops up another box, which again, you probably can't see because the is crazy about pop up boxes, where you're going to type either the author's name, the article name, anything that you can remember about that. And you probably will see the Zotero menu has come up, which will, uh, which I think is helpful because usually I'm working in a particular folder. So I'm just going to include, and you can include multiple things. Again, you're probably not seeing this. But I am going to hit enter and then go back to my Google Docs. And so it has included the in-text citation, which is great. Then once you're done um, writing your paper, whatever it is, you can go back to the Zotero window and hit add or edit bibliography. And it will include those citations. So these were the ones I copied and pasted down here. These are the ones that um, I just added. So super awesome. Uh, Zotero is also really smart in that you can refresh it. So if you add more citations as you're writing, it will remember and it will add that. And if you're using a numerical style, it will remember the order and it will change the order if you change um, where those citations are. So that's pretty cool. Oh my goodness, I'm running out of time. Okay, so really, really quickly, I'm going to jump in here and um, for working with teams, just go to zotero.org slash groups. Everyone has to have a Zotero account. And um, if you want to share PDFs, that must be set to private. So summing up, I know this was really quick. Usually most of my workshops are like an hour of Zotero, maybe longer. So I was trying to get all the really cool stuff, but there definitely is more that's in there. Um, it's a great way to organize things and keep, or keep yourself organized and sane if you're working on any kind of project that has a lot of references. There's a learning curve, but it's not super complicated and it might not really change your life, but it's really going to save you some frustration. Um, if you want to learn more, just search on library websites. Everyone in library land loves Zotero. So we've created a lot of YouTube videos and there's library websites and even their website's pretty helpful. Um, the next scholarly snippets webinar is uh, titled what to expect from the IRB. You can register there. And if you registered for this webinar and aren't watching the recorded version, you will be sent an evaluation and we'd love to hear how this went. I know I'm out of time. I'm so sorry. I tried to talk fast, but if there's any questions or comments, I'm happy to stay longer. I don't have anything pressing. So, um, but if you have to log off, that's fine. I understand that as well. But this is my contact information. Uh, feel free to email me or reach out to me on Twitter. I'm, I'm definitely happy to hear from you. And I consider myself the high priestess of Zotero. So I'm always happy to talk about it. All right, any questions? Oh, I see some stuff in the chat. Oh, got some thank yous, excellent. 
Uh, thank you, Kyle, for putting the registration stuff in there as well. Okay, any questions? No, excellent. Okay, well, thank you everyone for attending. I appreciate that. Um, and I hope to see you, to see you at the next scholarly snippets uh, webinar.